Welcome back, friends of the shop. I've got to tell you guys, many of you, or the vast majority of you, are in the doghouse with Mrs. W. The poll, the poll results are in, and most people said, go ahead and keep the beard. Now, I was on the fence with that uh, until some of my, well, a very small number of my ni minority, is, are females a minority? I think it's the other way around, right? Some of my female audience, which, which is less than 4%, uh, said it made me look handsome. So that was uh, that broke the straw that broke the camel's back right right there So we have a lot of fun stuff and today it's springtime There's a lot of things to do. We've got to uh, we've got mowing We had a big green up uh, meaning we had a late season rain and the grass of course you just grew up like crazy Did you know? A farmer once told me this that one inch of rain is equivalent to seven inches of irrigation I don't know, it's one of those mysteries, right? There's something, maybe an electrical charge or it's just better water or something about it really promotes crop growth. Well, the same thing goes with grass. So what can happen in, in the wildland is that if you get, at late in the season, if you get a heavy rain, man, the grass and the bushes and the brush, they just explode. We've all seen it like in the springtime, right? Well, what happens is they have no longevity. It's like uh, in the good book, the, the seeds that were cast on the stones, right? They all spring up really quickly, but they have no roots until they don't stick. So what happens is that th those things will grow up and make a bunch of brush and grass. The sun comes out, they die. Now we've got fuel everywhere. So we've got to deal with that. We're doing that today. So we'll, we'll go do that as well. But first off, we've got to change the oil on our mailbox. What's going on, young Jack? First egg. Is that the first one? Yeah. Look how little it is. That's exciting, huh? Mm-hmm. Is this the first time you've checked this week? Has it been in there a while, or is uh, you check every day? I've been checking like every other day because I haven't been laying, but now I'm gonna have to check every day. Let's go show the sweet loaf. Would you like to see? Yeah. Well, come out, please. I never thought that I would be putting shoes on the wrong feet for her. <laughs> well, what is it? You see your shoes on the wrong feet. What are your shoes on the wrong feet? Hello, what is that? Look. Is that the egg for me? Is that our first egg? That's our first egg. Is that my egg? Uh, yeah. Hey, it's about time, huh? What is Papa, it? What does it smell like? Can you open it? No, it's not cooked yet. Would you like to eat it? I wouldn't recommend that. When I was a young man, one of my one of the memories I have, I told you, you know, gr work, growing up. I spending a lot of time working in my granddad's shop who was a mechanic. Um, that's where I was really exposed to tools. I was exposed to a lot of carpentry tools on my dad's side and mechanical tools on my grandfather's side. That's what gave, gave me a good, well-rounded education, you know, from kind of both of them. One of his things is he had one of these old school little oilers right there. You know, you probably grew up with these, these guys. Well, I had his that I used, man, I used it for a decade when I was doing Jeep parts and and it quit working and it just something broke internally and I was really sad about that. I thought there's never, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to find one of those again. You know, I mean, everything now is cheap and made overseas. I couldn't believe it. I got online looking for a USA made one and the good folks in Nebraska, the great state of Nebraska, the Goldenrod Company actually make these just like they have been back in the day. And they're still made in America. I got this combo right here. Granddad had both of these. He had this one here and he had one of these. So how I set these up and why these are so handy is that you just have at your disposal when you need to lubricate something or get a little oil on something or something squeaking or greasing, you can grab this and give it a couple squirts and it's good to go. The same thing with these little guys, the little oil. How classic is that? You know, that sound. So I, what I do is I put two different types of oil in. I'll just run just a regular 30 weight, just, just, normal stuff here just the cheap whatever you can get that's the cheapest and you can just put that on just about everything and then in here on this one i run something completely different i run uh, croil croil it's the oil that creeps <laughs> this is good stuff this is a penetrating oil so it's a different it's very very thin if we look at these up close here let me show you the difference between the two here's our normal 30 weight if we put a little drop there look how it how slowly it it oozes right well the croil if we put that on here, look at how it, see how it spreads out? It's very, very thin. This is excellent. If you ever have to have something that it's stuck, like a bolts or nuts or things that you, you know, that, that a thick oil may not get in and penetrate right away, this stuff, what do they say? It oozes, <laughs> it loses, it creeps. That's what it is, croil creeps. I even use this croil on bolts. Man, I don't get too wrapped around the axle about uh, 
maintenance on these things. I'll blow it off with compressor, and, and if I'm in the heat of it doing a lot of shooting, mean, even the bore, I don't even worry about that. I figure the copper jacket will sort that, <laughs> sort that out. But uh, this stuff, so, it creeps so much, you can just put it in there like that and get it in there, and, and man, you're good to go. <laughs> Probably not an approved method, but it's better than uh, lubricating with carbon. Let's head over to the mailbox, and we'll deal with that oil. Our flag is gaudy. I don't think so. I like it. Although the Union Jack is nice too, but I prefer this one. Let's dig out around here a little bit. We don't want any rocks to get in our hole. This is one of the most common questions I get asked uh, and have for years. Our guys asking, "Hey, don't forget to." Don't forget to change the oil uh, in your in your post there. And uh, I put it on the calendar, so I remember. So there's a plug right here. So next time you're in town, uh, or at least in this area, you'll see little plugs uh, in the telephone poles. Um, and there's actually a guy that will go around there. I saw him go by and do it one time uh, with a can of creosote or something. And he would uh, fill those up. I guess it's cheaper. There you go. There's the stopper. <laughs> I guess it's cheaper to have a guy uh, doing that than um, they're replacing the posts. So the little goldenrod deal, you can get the better part of a quart of oil in there. So that's usually enough. So I just fill that up there. That's it. That's all there is to it. And put our plug back in and that will last. That'll make that post last a long time. All right, I think we're good for a year. So, probably like many of you guys, I'm sure I was not the only one, pretty much, well, glued to a computer monitor, watching the rioting, watching everything going on. You know, one thing that, one of the byproducts of having a large channel with a big audience is I, it gives me a lot of access to, to folks all over the world. I have really loyal subscribers that are placed high in military intelligence that give me information, nothing illegal, but just kind of, hey, you might want to look for this, you might want to think about that, this is becoming a problem, not only domestically, but internationally, as well as just on the ground people. I was just talking to my UPS driver, um, and he was, you know, he's get, telling me what's going on in town, and I've been hearing from you guys, I heard from many of you that were basically barricaded in your homes with AR-15s or shotguns watching down the road with people burning and looting, right? And you've got your children sleeping in there. You know, I'll tell you what, the American, the good American people are very kind and, and patient people and very slow to anger. And you may, if you are one of these people that are taking advantage of the situation and, and, and breaking into things and destroying people's property, and, and you think that you're, you're getting emboldened because you're not getting a lot of pushback, um, don't count on that. Just because you're in Portland or San Francisco or you're in a city where you have a sympathetic local government uh, that is not really taking this seriously or even tepidly supporting it, well, this is emboldening people. And what you have here is you have a group of spoiled, rotten children that have not been raised right, most likely don't have fathers in the home, that ha are living in a society that is, offers no opportunity for them to step out of childhood into adulthood. And you guys know, you've been young men. I mean, young men make good soldiers. Why? Well, because you want to prove yourself. You want to know how well you stack up to your to your friends, do you, do you have the courage to do this and that? And that, that ritual, that righthood is so important. I was really lucky to have that with strong men in my family and, and that initiation from staying at home with the women to going out and being able at 12 years old to hunt and to, with the men, you know, that was an important thing like that, that these guys are lacking. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. We can get into the psychology behind this, but what it comes down to is basically spoiled, rotten children with too much time on their hands, a lack of oversight, and no one holding them accountable. But I'll tell you what, try that stuff, try that nonsense into the suburbs. Try to see how different it'll be when you start touching upon the sanctity of someone's home with their sleeping wife and children in there and a gun safe full of rifles. 
There are a lot of guns in this country. There are a lot of men like myself that have spent a lot of resources and time and energy in preparing myself and training myself to handle anything that could come about here. Now, I'm not, not saying anything, but I'm more prepared than you are and the majority of my friends are as well. Don't think you're gonna get away with that. And don't think that there aren't gonna be consequences for that. If you have been sh filmed, videoed, if you posted these things on social media, I guarantee you there are hundreds if not thousands of FBI agents right now actively combing over all of that footage, which is out in the ether and out of your control now. And facial recognition, what we have access to is incredibly effective. Can you imagine what militarized or government facial recognition, what that is? They're cross-referencing and they're going to be pulling those faces up and you will be served uh, with, with arrest warrants at your home or your residence and you're going to be doing some hard time and your life is going to be very miserable. There are consequences to this. And um, just because it hasn't happened right now doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And just try that nonsense in our homes. One phone call, I could have 12 guys here that could hold off an army 10 times their size. I kid you not, untrained people. And, and I'm not saying I want it to go that. I don't want it to go that. I, I'm an enthusiast. I enjoy firearms. I don't want them for killing. I just enjoy the whole thing. But if push comes to shove, I'm not the only one that was cleaning, polishing, and preparing for anything that might happen or might come through our front door. So this is not where that video was supposed to go. Let's get back to the mowing. I don't need any more projects. I have got a list this long. You sure you don't want it? Pretty athletic for an older lady. Oh! <laughs> you old mean You're looking man. very Scandinavian today. I am very Scandinavian. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you working on? Uh, I have been working on classical conversations for next year. Lots that's, of phone calls. That's our home, home school curriculum. That's right. Yeah. So getting everything organized for next school year. Are you looking forward to it? Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Are you going to be teaching next year? No, I'm going to be directing Foundations Essentials. What's that, does that mean you're the boss? Uh, no. <laughs> it means I get to organize and do paperwork. Sounds like the boss. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. If someone's in trouble, who deals with it? Me. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> SRDH. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Jariah is mowing. Okay. Uh, Jack is sharpening the weed whipper, okay. as you like to call it. And uh, he's got his driver's ed coming up, and I'm going to go um, edit video.